Matthew chapter 26, and we're going to receive communion at the end of the sermon. The sermon won't be that long, but I trust it will be powerful and impactful for you. I um, am absolutely... Lots of times when I come, when it comes to preparing the word, the Lord primes the pump in my heart. I feel pretty primed. Not to be like a volcano of excitement, but I just feel primed with a powerful word. So I trust as you lean into it, you'll hear the Father's heart today. But we're going to read uh, Matthew 26, 47 through 68. And I know that we don't do it very often, but I would like you to know when you do it, having music in the background, it's not just to be more Pentecostal. If we wanted that, we'd have somebody on the organ and just go and... I think many of you will, will you'll pick up the song that's being played. It's quiet enough that it's not supposed to be too much of a distraction, but you're going to hear the sermon through the song that's being played. You're going to hear the sermon through the word. And I trust the layer upon layer. And that's the whole point. When we do this, when we have the music, you're often going to hear that you know, like I picked this very strategically. We're preaching twice. It's two for one today. And uh, if you don't know the hymn, I'm going to go through the lyrics a little later on in the service. The hymn is Glory to His Name. I don't know about you, but I, I had a dad. I haven't gotten the scripture yet, but I had a dad who uh, he was a pastor. And we had Sunday night services back then. And I, Sunday night services, they weren't as structured. They were, there was, the, it was the moments when, when, they, when my dad, my dad would lead worship and he would preach and such, but he would often do like him sing Sunday nights, basically. So every Sunday night was, was you know, you have a hymnal in your hand and you can call out any number in the hymnal. My dad was, is a musician extraordinaire and I really don't just say that to say it it is really true he can play any instrument it's like he grabs it makes noise with it and then all of a sudden he knows how to play every note and it's all good and especially when it comes to hymns he can play any hymn you want and if he doesn't know it you just gotta sing it even if you don't sing it on key he'll get it and um, I can hear my dad I can see my dad in fact like there's a specific moment of my dad playing the piano on a Sunday evening in a little church in a town called Killam, Alberta, by Camrose, a little farming community. And I can hear my dad, I can see my dad playing that piano and calling out and saying, anybody else got a hymn they want to sing? And we'd sing five or six, seven, I don't know. Some testimonies would happen, and then my dad would preach, and I can hear my dad singing this song. One of the things that I did not inherit from my father was his singing voice or his musical aptitude. And I, I've tried, and you help me so well when I do sing out, and I do appreciate that. I want to read to you the lyrics. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. 
are so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross, where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin, I'm so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this mountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Let's read the word now. We're in Matthew 26, verse 47 through 68. Basically, three weeks' time, we're going to be on the cross, studying through that moment with Jesus on the cross. I'm looking forward to that Sunday. Wow. But leading up, I'm just, the anticipation is mounting for me. Verse 47, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him. This is the moment Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged to signal with them, a signal with them, the one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Like they didn't even know, of course they knew who Jesus was. They do. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you come for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Not a really good, not really good with the aim. But he got his ear. Yeah, maybe the guy dodged. That's true. That could be. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put my, at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Even every day I have sat in the temple courts teaching and you do not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who were arrest, those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, are you not going to answer what is the test what is this testimony that these men are bringing against you but Jesus remained silent the high priest said to him i charge you under oath by the living god tell us if you are the messiah the son of god 
You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to you, all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One. That is, Jesus is saying, you're going to see me sitting with God in heaven. He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us. Messiah, who hit you? Forgiveness in the Bible is a release or a dismissal of something. The forgiveness we have in Christ involves the release of sinners from God's penalty and the complete dismissal of all charges that are associated to our sin against us. Colossians chapter 1 verse, 50, verse 14 says that in God's beloved Son, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The Amplified Bible translates the last phrase like this, the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sins penalty. This is what we have when it comes to what, when you think of the fact that you are forgiven or if you are pursuing the forgiveness of Christ, which if you haven't, you should. It's a free gift. It's called salvation. Repent of your sins. He's willing. He's able. He wants to forgive our sins. He wants to cancel and he wants to remove the penalty of our sin. And that's what he does when he forgives. When Christ forgives. Forgiveness is an integral part of our salvation. When Jesus forgives us our sins, our trespasses, our iniquities, our transgressions are erased. They're erased. They're wiped off the record. They don't exist anymore. It's a funny thing. We remember them because we did them. But in, in the sight of God, because of the payment of Jesus on the cross, paying for our sin, taking the penalty of all of our sin on him. When God looks at us, he sees Jesus. He sees that the payment is paid. And we are forgiven. A very poignant picture of this is seen in verses 50 through 51. You might go, really? We're going back to Peter swinging a sword, cutting a guy's ear off for the gospel. Yeah, you can see the gospel in Peter swinging a sword. Peter, in all of his passion and excitement, the scripture says that he grabs a sword and he takes a swing. For as long as I can remember, every preacher likes to take a moment and poke fun at, at Peter and say, well, he's not very good with a sword. That's, 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 that's like a common joke that happens from the pulpit when you read these verses. He got his ear. He cut it off. In John chapter 18, that's where we read that it was Peter. In Matthew, as we read it, we didn't see that it was Peter. But in John, it records the same moment. And in Luke, it records the same moment. In John, the book of John, John records for us that it was Peter that took the swing with the sword. And it was against a servant of the high priest, and his name was Melchius. This is John chapter 18. What Peter did 
was he committed a capital crime. That is to say, he could be put to death for cutting that servant's ear off with the sword. Execution was his end. But Luke records for us this moment, as I said, in chapter 22. And it says that before Jesus was taken away, he took the ear off the ground, or maybe it was in Melchizedek's hand, because he had picked it up, maybe, I don't know. He grabbed it, he got a hold of Melchizedek's ear, and I'm going to dare, I'm going to dare say, this is not just a little bit of a nick. He cut it off. The scripture says he cut it off. The scripture did not say that he got his ears pierced with a big old sword. He said he got his ear cut off. Jesus grabs the ear and puts it back on Melchizedek's head. Heals Melchizedek. What is happening here? Well, it's the gospel all over the place. Really? Jesus. Jesus is removing all evidence of the capital crime of Peter. Melchizedek, he could have gone to any of the judges, any of the, the, the high priests, or whatever, the, the, the ruling authorities, and said, this man assaulted me, he cut my ear off. It's punishment by death. And those rulers, what would they do? Cover your left ear, because the scripture says it was his right ear. Cover your left ear. Can you hear me? Yeah. Robin is right here. What is this? It's still on your head. See, Jesus removed all evidence of that capital sin, that capital offense. In healing Melchizedek's ear, he removed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <clears throat> this is what Jesus did for all of us. By dying on the cross. By being the payment for our sin. When we come to him and believe in him as the Lord and Savior, declaring him as Lord, making him our Lord, and receiving him as our Savior, both Savior and Lord. See, lots of people get the Savior part, but do you know that Jesus is our Lord? In that transaction of payment for sin that happens when someone accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, everything is canceled. It's removed. Just like Peter having cut off Melchizedek's ear, the payment, which was his doomed life, is paid for. It's done. It's removed. All evidence of any crime committed is gone. And in the same way, when we receive Christ and we allow the blood of Christ to wash us, as the scripture said, we'll get into it in a moment, white as snow. There's a complete removal of all evidence of sin. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. <sighs> Wow, you guys. That's why when, we, when, when the devil tries to throw stuff back in our face, well, you did that and you did that, that's why we have the authority and the ability to say, shut up, devil. I'm a Jesus. 
I don't know what you're talking about. I just see the blood of Jesus. Church, we need to be confident in the blood of Jesus to wash us clean. Confidence in anything else will do us no good. It'll condemn us to hell. But confidence in the blood of Jesus, that, my friends, that, my brothers and sisters, huh, salvation. Salvation. For those who would believe. Praise the Lord. Let me go a little deeper with you. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Whiter than snow, figuratively expressed, is the condition of the one who has received God's forgiveness, cleansing from sin and redemption. We are made white as snow. Praise the Lord. The scripture is a beautiful thing. It allows us to look into people's lives. An intimate look. Into many people's lives. Recorded historically. In Psalm 51, we have David. David makes lots of mistakes. It's in Psalm 51 that he is at his end. He is... He is a mess, and he is expressing it. He's saying, my sin is, I think it's verse 3, my sin is forever before me. What was that sin? Well, that's just, we're being raw today. Well, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. He abused his authority, I'm sure, to make that happen. Right? Committed adultery with Bathsheba. Then recovered all up because she got pregnant. Killed her husband. Like this, he was a mess. Still, David knew the mercy of God. And though life causes lots of potholes that we can get ourselves trapped in, we know at the end of David's life it was declared of him that he was a man after God's heart. How does someone who does that get that? It's the power of the blood. It's the power of the mercy of God. I know Jesus had not yet died on the cross yet for David, but this is the mercy of God. And David says in verse 7 of chapter 51 of Psalms, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hyssop, let me talk to you about this. Hyssop is a bush, it's a plant, it's a, it's a shrub. And what they would do is they would take this, this a branch of hyssop and they would dip it in the blood of sacrifice, a, a sacrificial um, animal, a goat, a, 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 a bull, something of that sort would be sacrificed and they would dip that hyssop branch in the blood and then they would sprinkle it specifically on people who have been cleansed, healed of leprosy. And it was it was this it was this whole cleansing thing where they've been where they've been 
um, not allowed to be a part of the community, where they've not been allowed to, where, where, where they've been in a place of death, this is the acknowledgement of payment, this is the acknowledgement of healing, this is the acknowledgement of God's touch on their life, and they, they're, they're whole, they're allowed back in the community, they're, they're cleansed. They're cleansed. And leprosy is not something that you just wash off. If you start washing too much with leprosy, you'll start pulling stuff off. Right? Digits and nose and ear. And you don't need Peter's sword. It just falls off. Right? This leprosy. It's a terrible disease. David's prayer was to be washed and made whiter than snow. Or prophetically pointing to the greater, more perfect appropriate appropriation of God's grace, forgiveness, and salvation made available through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. David wanted the blood. He needed the blood of a sacrifice to be clean. He knew it. We've all needed the blood of a sacrifice, of a pure, spotless lamb, Jesus Christ, to be made clean. We've all needed it. David knew it, and that, that, that's why he's talking about this whole hyssop thing. That's the whole connection there. It was a prophetic pointing to Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 9, verses 12 through 14, it says this, with his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, not the blood of the Old Testament sacrifices, but the blood of the new covenant in Jesus. He entered the most high place once for all time, once, once, once. He did it once. That's all it took. and secured our redemption forever. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of the heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Verse 14, just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. You know, we may consider our transgressions and we might look at them and go, well, mine are kind of like David's or, or even they're worse than David's. I want to assure you there is nothing, there is nothing that can't be forgiven under the blood of Jesus. The Apostle John affirmed, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. And the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. If we confess our sins, See, you know, just wait. You do need to repent. You do need to acknowledge the wrong and bring it to Jesus for his touch, for his cleansing. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You know, I, I remember as a teenager um, watching James Dobson interview I can't remember who, this mass murderer guy. Ted Bundy. Oh, that's Ted yeah. Bundy. I believe, if I'm remembering right from my teenage years, which was some 26, 27 years ago, 30 years ago, it's getting <laughs> I gotta start doing math more. Um, in that interview, I believe, if I remember right, 
James, James Dobson led Ted Bundy to Christ. It's kind of like, what? Like anybody of us in the older generation, when we remember Ted Bundy, remember the story of his mass murderers and all that, that was terrible. Can God forgive Ted Bundy? Yes. Yeah, but he didn't prove himself. He, he, he didn't have this ability. Neither did the guy on the cross next to Jesus who said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responds, I will. There was no life or no proving or no test to write, no chorus to take. Belief in Jesus. Last second as it may be, praise the Lord, the blood of Jesus is able. Praise the Lord. But the, 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 the reality, we don't want to wait for that, right? We want to live in the victory of the blood. We want to live in the victory and life of Jesus that we've been afforded in Christ. And so we don't want to wait. Because who knows if we're going to have that ability to proclaim Jesus, to repent in our last moment. Who knows? Only the Lord. So do it now. Like every Christian, we have flaws. And we must repent and draw near to the Lord in our blackest, darkest moments of failure. Asking Christ, who loves us and who has freed us from our sins by his blood, to forgive us and wash us, to wash our guilt-stained souls whiter than snow. Listen, there is the ability, there is the need. Let's just be real. Let's just be raw. If you got to repent daily, repent daily until you learn how to not do whatever you're repenting to do. You know, whatever you, whatever causes you to repent daily, do it until you've learned of the power of the grace of Jesus and it's transformed you. Like that's the transforming work of the grace and blood of Jesus. Shapes you and molds you. Did I get it right today? No. Did I get it right tomorrow? No. Did the next day? No. 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 Oh, I got it right. Oh, I got it right again. Oh, I messed up. Oh, I got it right. And three out of five, you get it right. And then, and then four out of five. And then five out of five. And you're transformed. It's the sanctifying work of the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Don't let the devil hold anything over your head. Repent and let the blood of Jesus wash it clean. I'll close with this before we receive communion. Revelation chapter 7 verse 14 says, Speaking of redeemed people who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of of the Lamb. It is through Christ's sacrifice on the cross, the shedding of his blood, that we are redeemed and rescued from the kingdom of darkness. We're rescued from hell and we're moved into the scriptures of the glorious light of the kingdom of heaven. We are moved from death to life. From condemned to redeemed. From guilty to forgiven. And this beautiful transaction of red blood makes us white as snow. Wow. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I receive communion. Before we do,
there anybody here who would say, I feel like David and I need washing? Is there anybody here who would say, more specifically, you need salvation, you need Jesus to be your Savior and Lord? You need that holy transaction to happen. Repentance and grace. Guilt and forgiveness. You need that forgiveness. Is there anybody here who would say, that's me, I need Jesus. I need to make him my Savior and Lord. I need salvation. Because I need it. Is there anybody here who would say that? If not, as I mentioned earlier in the service, in the beginning of the service, the scripture says, before you take communion, you need to examine your heart. You need to allow the blood of Jesus to, you need to repent and allow the blood of Jesus to wash you clean. Before you come to the table, you need to wash your hands. You don't need salvation. You need to wash your hands, though. You need a wash. And so I encourage you, we're going to take 30 seconds, I'm going to ask you to just make sure you're right with the Lord. I mean, if we're going into the scripture, don't take it wrongly. If you're not right with the Lord, don't take it. Because the scripture says, that's why people have fallen asleep. That is to say, they died early. Because this is the holy thing. This is a holy moment. <coughs> and it is not to be trifled with or done tritely or quickly. And so let's be sure that we are right with the Lord. Let's take, take 30 seconds. That's all it takes. Be quick. Lord God, I repent of this. Wash me clean. Thank you for your grace. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Jesus alone is our Savior. Jesus alone is the one who can wash away sin and make us white as snow. Jesus alone can pay the penalty for our sin. Jesus alone. Jesus alone. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your washing. Thank you for the transaction. Though our sins be as scarlet, we are made white as snow. I'm going to ask the four men that I've asked to um, come and help me serve. Well, four men, sorry, three plus a one. A lady. Raylene and Brian and Marcus and Ben, could you come to the front? We're going to hand out the emblems. I'll explain how we're going to do this. You guys want to just, yeah, take on. Yeah, and really, you can do center. And Marcus, if you want to go on that side, and Ben, you want to go in the center? Okay, there we go. I think that'll work. Church family, there's a lot of ways that communion is received in the church. It 
it is my personal conviction, and, and I know that I can stray from this at different times because I'll just go by the leading of the Spirit. If He wants me to walk you through the Scripture, I will, but it's my personal conviction that this is something that's holy between you and God, and I don't like the idea that we often spoon feed such a moment. Well, now you can eat the bread, and now you can drink the cup. No. I think once your heart is ready, and once you've made the connection between what you're doing, then you can receive. In a moment, um, once the emblems are back, serve these servants and then think. I'm going to read you through the lyrics of glory to his name again. Thank you, Aileen and Brian and Ben and Marcus. Thank you. I'd ask you, just in your own space and time, in your own moment with the Lord, as I read through these lyrics, Carla, could you have them rolling on the screen? Awesome. Thank you, Carla. Down at the cross, Receive your emblems as you feel led, as I read. Down the cross, where my Savior died. Down where, for cleansing from sin, I cry. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am glad I have entered in. There Jesus saved, saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Nelson, would you fade the music out? Would you all stand with me? I'm going to ask you to sing with me as we close. <clears throat> Glory to his name. We're going to move into a time of meal together. Brian and Raylene are our prayer ministry team today. They'll be here at the front. If you need prayer, please come. They they're here ready to minister to you. 
the grace and truth of Jesus. I'll pray for the meal after we're done singing. But then basically, if you want to stay in this environment or if you want to go in and eat, that's up to you. But remember, I will be given a call to end the meal. And we'll do a quick cleanup and we'll move into the meeting after that. Would you sing with me, nice and loud, as victorious Christians that you are, glory to his name. I'm going to need your help. For those that know it, sing it nice and loud. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Verse 2. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross is where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin, I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. I'll sing what you sing now. Go to the chorus. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my sin was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Last verse. Come to this mountain. Come to this mountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in the day and be made complete. Glory to his name. Nice and loud. Let's sing the chorus. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my sin was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that though our sins were of scarlet, you washed them white as snow. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for your word that never changes in lyrics. That might change from screen to paper, but your word never changes, and it declares Amen. that though our sins are scarlet, we can be washed white as snow through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This reality never changes. It never shifts. It never moves. Thank you, Jesus, for the powerful work of the cross, of your blood shed. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior, for paying for our sin, for making us clean, for making us white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Praise the Lord. Lord God, thank you for the meal we're going to share. And thank you, Lord God, for the unity meeting we are going to have after the meal. Lord God, we give you praise for everything you are doing among us. 
in us and through us. Lord God, let it grow. Let it continue. It is our heart to courageously always follow you. In all and through all we do. You are our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the food, Lord God. Bless our afternoon. Amen. Amen, amen.